Helium, if released into the atmosphere, escapes to outer space and is gone for good. This is why the world is slowly but inevitably running out of helium reserves. But a group of scientists now says there is a lot of helium hidden in the core of our planet. The world has already seen four helium shortages. The most recent one lasted about a year and ended in early 2024. It was caused by unplanned outages at major helium production facilities, notably in the US and Qatar. And it caused quite some headaches in the semiconductor industry. Yes, you heard that right. Helium is essential to produce microchips. It's not because helium keeps microchips floating. At least I think that's not what they mean with cloud computing. It's because the semiconductor industry uses helium for production processes like plasma etching or temperature control during extreme ultraviolet lithography. They use helium because it has an excellent thermal conductivity and as a noble gas is largely chemically inert. That's why they're called noble gases. They don't mingle with the working class of the periodic table. But helium has other uses and I don't just mean party balloons and Mickey Mouse voice. Voices. It's used in many industries for cooling. This is because helium has an extremely low boiling point of merely 4.2 Kelvin and at normal atmospheric pressure doesn't freeze at all. If you have liquid helium and you bring it into contact with a warm sample, the helium will evaporate. That carries away energy and cools the sample until it's below 4.2 Kelvin. And since the helium remains liquid, you can immerse the sample in it. This is why helium is used to cool large magnets in MRI machines, particle accelerators and quantum computers. There is simply no other chemical element that behaves that way and that's why helium is basically irreplaceable. But since demand in the semiconductor industry is steeply rising, our helium resources are rapidly dwindling. Helium prices have been going up and up by more than a factor of five in the past 20 years. The world's remaining helium reserves have been estimated to be roughly 50 to 70 billion cubic meters. The biggest shares are in Qatar, Russia and the United States. This helium is trapped in porous rocks, usually together with methane and extracted much the same way, often along with natural gas. At 2022 demand rates, global reserves could have lasted 200 to 300 years, but the rapid AI developments have increased demand for semiconductors and with that for helium. If we don't find a solution, it looks like we'll run out of helium in this century. In the new paper now, researchers from Japan and Taiwan report a surprising finding. They say that when helium and iron-rich minerals are heated and put under high pressure, like in the Earth's core, they can bind together. They reproduced Earth core-like conditions in the laboratory and found that the helium binding capacity was 5,000 times larger than expected. This is surprising because helium usually doesn't react. This means that a lot of helium which our planet got as it was formed might actually still be here. So far geologists assume that because the helium can't bind to rocks it gases out and escapes, except for some of it which gets temporarily stuck in these porous rocks. Now you might say okay, but we can't drill into the earth's core. Yes, but this might not be necessary. Rather, the finding that the rocks deeper inside of Earth can bind to helium could mean that the helium reserves in Earth's upper crust can replenish. Because it's not that the helium doesn't gas out, it just does so much more slowly than we thought. Indeed, this seems to be compatible with earlier findings. Already two years ago, geologists reported that lava samples, which they found on Baffin Island in Canada, contain unusually high amounts of helium. They were already conjecturing then that Earth's core seems to be leaking helium. Let me be clear that this doesn't mean our helium problems are suddenly solved. No one has any idea how to actually make use of this finding, but if what they say is right, then I think there is at least hope that our helium supplies will last much longer than anticipated. We can produce helium in principle with nuclear fusion reactors. However, this is unlikely to solve the problem anytime soon, not just because we have no nuclear fusion plants that produce net energy, though there's that, but also because the amounts of matter that go in and out of nuclear fusion reactors are so tiny. Meanwhile, researchers are 
implementing ways to use helium more sustainably, such as using closed loop systems. And when the party's over, please squeeze the helium back into the bottle. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples, like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.